uh, go find a picture of it quite quickly and pull you it should, up. You should, you should, because it's, 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 it's crap. He Let's should have smiled. It. I'll say that much. He should have, he should have smiled in the mugshot because then, yeah, he would at least be seeming like he's taking the piss or he's not taking it that seriously. He seems kind of defeated. When you look serious in a mugshot, you kind of look defeated, in my opinion. If he smiled, it would almost be funny. Like, he should have smiled. If I was his campaign manager or involved in giving him advice, I would have said smile in the mugshot. Very important. Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel the opposite way. I feel like the mugshot looked absolutely fucking badass and <laughs> just like won him back so much support because it has this kind of stern look of like, uh, okay, you want to try and put me in jail? Like we're coming. Like, uh, you know, had this kind of gangster energy about it. Um, I someone think it asked, someone really... asked for my mug. Someone asked in the comments for my mugshot. I don't have a mugshot, but somewhere on the internet, there's a photo of me in jail because you could take photos of yourself you could you, pay, you have to pay for it you have to pay for everything in jail even your haircuts uh there's you could get a polaroid photo one per year you were allowed to pay for one per year they were like eight dollars and i don't have it anymore but it's somewhere on the internet we'll see if i can find it but yeah they don't really do mug shops in australia that's not really a thing maybe they do but they're not like publicly accessible everything in america seems to be publicly accessible even the individual's criminal record in australia those kind of things are protected but see that anyway, oh actually here's the that isn't shot. too bad. That's actually not too bad. It's different. I the first time I saw it, I thought maybe it doesn't look that great. But yeah, at least he looks serious. He doesn't look weak. Better to look no, mean he's, than yeah, weak, my friend. Yeah, it's got this kind of badass energy of this kind of scarface energy of uh like he's not take he's not gonna take the punches lying down, he's gonna keep fighting, kind of thing. I feel like you know, Trump his presidency sucked he didn't live up to any of his promise but you know how so how is he going to it's now the third election cycle of this trump thing how is it going to remain interesting how are people going to care the third time around after he made all these big promises in 2016 and didn't deliver and so on well the new angle is oh they're just going to uh lock this the system is just going to not allow this guy to run for president not going to allow him to be an option they're just going to shut down democracy because someone's running who they don't like america are you going to take that or america are you going to go no fuck you we're voting trump twice as hard just to piss off the system that's kind of the angle i think that they've got going on that kind of uh war within the system vote trump in and he will he'll abolish the fbi or something that's kind of like the angle that they're going for the kind of campaign that they're going to run you know again whether he kind of lives up to the promise or not is uh, you know, I'm pretty skeptical, but if you're an American, what are you going to do? Like you got, you might as well just vote for him and just go press the chaos button and see what happens. Cause it's just, uh, exactly. yeah. <laughs> you're better off with chaos rather than more of what you've got right now in America. You're better off rolling the dice rather than keeping on getting what you've got. I just sent you a photo of my in prison mugshot. You can bring that up if people want to see that. I think it's pretty funny, really. Like, uh, I just tried to look as, uh, serious as i possibly could uh but that was taken in like what god i don't even know i would have been 21 or 22 in that photo but yeah i don't know it's not do really you, that do relevant. you think that the 2020 election was rigged against trump or do you think he just didn't win legitimately because there's like one school of thought in the uh kind of white identitarian scene that trump lost because he didn't do enough for white people during the campaign it was like how do we get the black vote on and blacks, only 8% of blacks voted for Trump. 92% of black voters voted for Biden. So that was a total failure. But he was doing, giving all this money to black businesses and pardoning rappers and all of this. Uh, meanwhile, he's kind of key promises he didn't really deliver on to white America. And so a lot of people say that's why he lost, because he just simply, um, you know, didn't honor his core constituency. Whereas there's obviously another school of thought that know that it, it was rigged. I don't know if, if you have a position on it. You can it's actually say it on not, YouTube now. It's probably not either or. It's probably a combination of things. However, I do think he was he went a little bit too soft on things, probably because he was listening to these old advisory boards and people with experience in, you know, the typical political process of America leading up to that time. But he shouldn't have listened to those people. He should have listened more to radicals because things were becoming more radical at that point in time and he wasn't radical enough 
and he was trying to appeal to too many different ethnic groups to keep getting elected and that kind of system that's run its course you've got to be really strong and really radical now you can't beat around the bush too much and do what's been done in the past you've got to like kind of try new things now i think so yeah he was a bit too soft um, on a few questions and trying to appeal to too many people but when you look at how the uh, protesters who marched on the Capitol, is that what that was when they, was that actually in the White House or in a building near the White House? When that was the at the protest- Capitol building where the Congress uh, meets. Yeah. When that was treated as like uh, a terror incident that was similar to September 11 or like it was treated like it was the worst thing in history. And it they treated it like sound. it was an attempted insurrection. Yeah. Yeah, because of the overreaction and the melodrama surrounding what was basically just a temporary occupation of a building, which has been done many times in American history, even by Nation of Islam, I'll bring them up again, they occupied a government building wielding firearms. No one shot any of them. It was just a protest and they were escorted out later. It made front page news. I think it was in the 60s or 70s, but that that's the exact same thing, but it wasn't treated like it was a terror incident. It was just a protest. And I think there's people still in jail now for that Capitol march, some of those protesters. One unarmed woman, Ashley Babbitt, shot, former military, US woman, uh, US military woman, shot for no reason other than she was just participating in the protest. What, was she shot by a Secret Serviceman or something? I don't know all the details. But that was abhorrent, and that was treated like, oh, she deserved it. The kind of, the, the lack of representation that those people got by the media and the political class in America was disgusting. And the fact that was treated with such disdain or like it was the worst thing in American history is very suspicious to me. It's like they, the people responsible for producing the results that of that election and bringing Joe Biden out as the elected president, it's like they were scared they were actually going to get held to account for screwing everyone over and actually stealing the election. That's what that said to me. It was very suspicious the way that was treated. Yeah, well, it's interesting. It's like uh, it's interesting because it's hard to know exactly how to feel about it. Because on the one hand, Trump is so zogged. He sold off his daughter to, well, he married her off to to Jews, literally to Jared Kushner, who's part of like a super connected Jewish crime family, uh, organized uh-huh. crime family that's also involved, I think, in intelligence in some capacity. Um, you know, as I said, his policy is that he ran on in 2016 weren't really implemented correctly they they took some of the sting out of immigration but it was only a marginal gain it was nothing too serious um you know he he did nothing during the black lives matter riots uh you know he really should have like crushed those uh declared martial law or something you know people say his hands were tied for that but you know ultimately it was a very disappointing uh presidency um and so it's like, well, what's the point of, of supporting him again? If you're an American, you know, what can you really expect next time that's going to be that different? But then on the other hand, you know, the polarization that this is going, this is already generated and that it's going to continue to generate in not only American politics, but I think global politics is a positive thing because it's exposing how fraudulent democracy is um, and how if anyone does anything even like in a nationalist style he's not even like a really legitimate nationalist but anything approximating nationalism or it's too similar to nationalism can't be permitted within a western democracy and the entire kind of establishment coordinates with all the elite institutions to crush it um and it's and it's good because uh it is really exposing the facade of liberal democracy in a similar way perhaps to if they try and rig this voice referendum in australia but just you know it, I think it feeds in well to uh, narratives in Australia, kind of anti-establishment populist narratives in Australia as well, um, with how political policing is conducted here, with how you know revelations that have come out. You know, we I discussed some of them on the show with uh, Tom a couple of nights ago around uh, how there's all these like foreign entities literally interfering on behalf of the Yes campaign in uh, Australian public discourse and so on, and how trying to condition the public to always vote a certain way um you know it's it's nice to see i think you know the american political situation rather than trump going out with a whimper he's going to go out with a bang no matter what happens it's going to be content it's going to be polarizing it's going to be uh, it's going to force the system's hand to pull back the veil and create a performance it's interesting because whatever you want to say about trump he's interesting 
which is like literally no politician ever is, is, is interesting. He's the only interesting politician I can think of in the world today, pretty much. So at least in the English speaking world. And uh, that's good. It politicizes society. It polarizes society. And uh, I think these are all positive things.